What's up YouTube? Uh, this is another quick update of uh, my workbench. So the last video I posted a couple days ago, uh, I was talking about some changes I was going to make. Uh, one of them was mounting my mag lamp, which I have. And the other was to get my DC load uh, put up on the bench. And I actually had to rearrange the entire thing and play some Tetris. Uh, my original plan was to replace on the top there you see my uh, frequency counter. I don't use it very often so uh, I was gonna find somewhere else to put it and then in its place put the thing on the bottom which is my DC load. Uh, but I actually uh, for some reason the way I had it laid out I wasn't able to get it to fit just by replacing it because it's taller and it is much longer. Um, it's actually about the same length as my uh, both of my power supplies. So uh, what I ended up having to do was just rearrange everything. So now my arbitrary wave, uh, waveform generator slash function generator, that used to be all the way on the right, I believe. Uh, the two power supplies, well, they're not in the exact same spot, but uh, they, they swapped them. Um, the Agilent one, I don't, I can't say it's more accurate, but it, it seemed like uh, it was more steady. Even under load, the voltage didn't change as much when it was under constant voltage mode. But the fans on it are loud. Uh, the Rigol fans aren't necessarily quiet, but uh, they do throttle with with temperature. So if you uh, if you put a pretty big load on it, the fans do start to speed up. Uh, but at least it's not always full blast like that thing is. And for all I know, the fans could get even louder than that. But I honestly don't think they're uh, thermal controlled. I think. Uh, the fans on it are actually just always full blast. And another annoying thing I find about it is that there's no number pad for entering a voltage or cur or, or current. Um, so I actually have to use this knob, and it's it's a it's a rotary encoder. I think it's a quadrature rotary encoder. Um, it doesn't have any notches to it. It's just smooth spinning. But uh, they put acceleration in there, and they did not tune it well. So it is extremely hard. If you turn it slow, it's creeping. If you turn it fast, uh, it is ballistic and you'll shoot way past what you're trying to hit which if it's if you're adjusting it while your circuit is live that could uh, be really dangerous and you can cook something so uh it's really annoying it's really hard to get used to uh i've gotten used to it but it's still not it's just it's really hard to use and it's a stupid ass design as where this even with a round keypad which also is a stupid ass design at least it's a keypad i've gotten used to where the numbers are and i can just punch in a voltage hit okay and then that's exactly what the voltage is set to or current so I think that's a smart design. I use it more often and I do most of my work either front and center at my computer or over in front of my soldering irons doing um, soldering. So I thought that putting it on this end of the bench, the, the end of the bench that I'm on more often uh, made more sense because I use this more often than that. Uh, so in the center, uh, it's not dead center anymore if you look, the monitor center. So uh, off to the right a little bit, but it's just how I was able to get it to fit is... Uh, the uh, good old beast of a oscilloscope. And then on the very end is my uh, bench multimeter, which again is in a much better spot now because the uh, function generator, I use it from time to time, but it's kind of like the frequency counter. It's not one of those things you use often like you do with an oscilloscope or power supply or a bench multimeter. So, and you know, even the bench multimeter, I don't use it as often as the, uh, the standalone units, which you can see there. Um, so, uh, I don't know. But anyways, it's, it's in a better spot now. Um, I kind of got them ordered in, uh, in a way to where the stuff I use more often is closer to where I normally am. Okay, so this is where I ended up mounting the mag lamp. I had to mount it uh, quite a ways away from the back to where when I turned it this direction, it didn't hit the wall. And I needed to move it right far enough to where it didn't hit the edge of my workbench. And then I needed to have it out far enough to where it didn't hit the wall or my whiteboard. Whoops, I uh, hit my my pop filter. Um, so that is where I ended up putting it. And then as far as where it goes when I'm working on something here and I don't need the mag lamp, like obviously I have my uh, workbench controller project, which you might have seen videos for. Uh, it's what I'm currently working on, and I don't need a mag lamp for any of that because there's uh, no small soldering that I have to do. It's big household um wiring so um, basically I can just push it out of the way and it actually it's I can't do it while I'm um, holding the camera but uh, I can push it down to where it's almost completely out of the way of the whiteboard too while it's in a down position and if I didn't have the little baby panavice sitting here 
Um, no, maybe I can do it. I don't. Yeah, I, I can't do this. There's a, a lever over here I can uh, use to ratchet this loose, and then I can move this up where it's flat, and then push it in where it's hovering over here. Uh, but I will demonstrate the reach, though. Uh, the 48-3-inch reach I found hard to believe, uh, especially when it's not mounted as heavy as this freaking thing is. And I mean, it is heavy. But it's heavy-duty, though. It stays put where you leave it. Uh, when you when you do go to move it, uh, it, it's hard to hold the base and keep it still while you're pulling on the thing if it's not mounted. So now that it's mounted, I was able to uh, demonstrate that I could pull it all the way over here to the center of my workbench, uh, and it reached perfectly fine all the way from back there. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, I'll pull it out and then show you. Lights on. Uh, I'm going to set the camera down and adjust that to where it's more level so I can pull it around. I can't do it with one hand. One second. Okay, so I got it adjusted. and um, So this is basically right to the edge of my workbench, which is just about perfect. I won't go back any further, but there's no time. Oh, sorry. About to drop some stuff. Uh, there's no time I would actually need it farther back because then you get to where my soldering iron and uh, hot air station is. So as far as going back, I don't need to go back any further, but it is awesome reach, so watch. Sorry, it's really hard to do this while I'm recording, holding a camera. I really need to get a, uh, a tripod. So that's not even like half half of its reach. I have it coming over to that edge of my workbench. So um, the entire workbench isn't covered. I can't go all the way to that end, but I could get about to the middle. So I'm gonna set the camera down and move it over there and then I'll uh, move the microphone and I'll show you that. Okay, so I'm back and I got it moved. So there's the center of my workbench. So there's the very left end and then there's the middle. And then look how far that damn thing reaches from where I have it mounted. And like I said, no matter how far I uh, reach it, they designed it and engineered it so well, it just stays put. Uh, it doesn't wiggle around, it, it's, it doesn't move, it just stays put. So uh, that's it. So the two additions, uh, I got the DC load, I had to rearrange everything to get it to fit. And then I finally got the good old trusty mag lamp mounted. So that is going to be super handy. Uh, I'm not that old. I'm 31, but man, it was really straining my eyes just doing through-hole soldering. Um, even at 0.1 inch pitch, it's just it's just small enough to where your eyes kind of play tricks on you, and you're wondering if you got it in the right uh, the right pin pad or not. And so uh, now I don't have to worry about that. I can amplify everything, and make it massive, and uh, use that bad boy. And since it articulates in so many directions, I'll be able to put it away where it's not uh, interfering with anything else. And uh, so. I think that's it with my workbench update. Uh, now that warm weather is around the corner, I live in the Midwest where we actually have four seasons and it is currently winter. Uh, but, well, I still have another cold month, but uh, after that it'll be spring and then I will f actually be motivated to go out to the garage and do some work. And then I will complete the uh, other end of my workbench. So as you can see, the workbench right here where it bends, that's actually a second part that I, I added on. I mean, I originally intended to do this I just built it modularly, modularly in parts. So that entire side piece, uh, I'm going to do something similar to that end. So right now it ends, but uh, to the left is uh, my computer desk. Uh, I, I'm basically going to extend it all the way over to the left wall into the corner. Uh, that way I have room. And actually where that old Rigol oscilloscope is sitting uh, is where uh, my 3D printer will sit. So that'll be uh, awesome to actually have it up instead of just collecting dust on the floor. I will have it up there. And then I might above it put um, some more shelving for more instruments because if I decide to get any more, uh, I basically don't have any room. Or at least for my, my uh, gadgets because, uh, for example, um, I got 
on the very right is my Agilent multimeter, and then the yellow one in the middle is the Fluke multimeter, and then I have my Agilent LCR to the left of that. And then I got one of those point, uh, point and shoot um, laser thermometer things. And then on top of that, I don't know if you can even see it in the camera, uh, is the, um, the Midi Tuyo, I don't know if I'm saying that right, I haven't looked at it for a while, uh, digital calipers. Um, let's see. Oh, I've got that, my uh, FLIR E5 uh, thermal camera, and then the little case next to that uh, is my X Xtech um, manometer. And, you know, I've just got all these gadgets and devices and don't have anywhere to put them. So since I have less uh, room on the ends now due to the way I rearranged my instruments by adding another one, uh, I think adding more instruments along the left side will be good. If I do that, however, I'll probably have to move those up because I have all my uh, parts bins or drawers, whatever you want to call them, uh, up on the top. So those are mounted lower. I'll just need to mount them higher uh, so I have room. And what I really like about the way I designed this one, uh, above the instruments, I have space to put the cables for the respective instruments. So directly above my oscilloscope. Well, actually, the things, are, things aren't right now. I lied. Since I rearrange everything, they're not in the right spots. But uh, excuse me. Above each instrument, like above the power supply, uh, that's about in the same spot as the old power supply. So you'll see uh, like alligator lead, banana plug jacks, and then you'll see BNC stuff. Actually, it used to be over here. So above there, you'll see BNC stuff. Uh, but you know, the, the respective cables are directly above the instrument. So some people prefer to just have them all draping down the side of one end of their bench and. You know, I could have done that, but I kind of liked being able to reach up while I'm seated and grab the coiled-up cable from uh, directly above the instrument. So that's just the way I decided to do it. But uh, I guess that's the end of the update. Uh, hopefully the next workbench update video will actually just be a demonstration of my uh, workbench controller project com uh, being completed, since I guess it's technically a, part, technically a part of the workbench. And then if I do another workbench up update after that, uh, hopefully it'll be the... Uh, the completed workbench, the left side that I never finished. So, uh, yep, I guess that's it for this supposedly quick update that ended up being closer to 14 minutes. So, <laughs> okay, never mind. I forgot one thing. Uh, I got on. Well, okay. So, as you can see, my soldering iron is not that, or soldering iron base station is not that deep. But uh, the base unit from a hot air rework station is it's pretty deep. It goes back pretty far. Um, and actually I have it sitting back farther than that is, and it still comes all the way out to here. Um, the problem I originally had was these stupid IEC, uh, connectors are long. So when you put it against the wall without straining it too much, you know, look how far that has to be from the wall. Um, pretty far. And I was, I wanted it to be farther back because I only have so much desk space between here and there. Um, so what I did was got on Monoprice and then got some 90 degree IEC connectors to where um, just after this part, the connector ends right about here and then the cable goes straight down. So as you can see, that is really close to the wall. Um, I couldn't go as far back with this unit because uh, I did get a 90 degree one for it also, but that's not the problem. The problem lies with the cable that goes over to the uh, uh, the base set because with the soldering iron, JBC does a power saving thing whenever it detects that it's in the cradle. Uh, it goes into power save mode and goes down to like, I don't know, 200 Fahrenheit or something like that. So when you pull it off of the thing, it gets back up to power really quickly, but at the same time, it's at a low enough temperature that it uh, saves energy. So for that to work, uh, you know, it's it's got a cable that goes all the way over uh, from the base station. So that cable sticks out. I don't know if you can see or if this is even working. Yeah, so you can see that cable sticks out and it's bending against the wall. Uh, if it weren't for that, I would be able to get it as close to the wall as I did with the uh, rework station. So because then the awesome 90 degree IUC cables, uh, that's close to the wall, that isn't. But that's not the fault of the cable for uh, the soldering iron part. That's just the uh, extra wire that comes out of it. But uh, so now I got two extra IEC cables I don't know what to do with, but uh, that actually freed up 
a little good amount of workspace. So not a ton of space, and some people might think it was a waste of money, but I don't know if you've been to Monoprice before. Their cables are cheap. So uh, every bit of workspace counts. <laughs> As you can see, mine is already covered in crap. So, uh, And this is kind of clean right now, actually, somewhat clean. So uh, every bit of space counts, and so to me it was worth getting those. Um, so for anyone with a, a shallow workbench, meaning, you know, it's not super deep from the front to the back, and you have your instruments sitting on the surface of the workbench instead of on an instrument rack, then, you know, your power supplies would come out to about here. And that's actually how my last workbench was, and it sucked. You know, I felt like I had about a foot of actual workspace because my instruments came out you know across the surface of the workbench halfway because of how deep they were but for some of you people who still have a workbench where your instruments are on the same level uh, you might actually consider getting on monoprice or any website but I don't think you'll find cheaper than monoprice for good safe quality ones uh, 90 degree connectors because you it might you know you might free up a couple inches of space and on a workbench that's already uh, hard up for space I think uh, that could be worth it so just a tip for me. Um, you don't have to do it, but uh, if you're hard up for space, totally worth it. But I've already blabbered on four minutes for that tiny little edition, so I'll shut up now. See you in the next video.